Well, welcome back to Random American, and today we are starting this thing. Kind of. So, let's go ahead and get into it. I got a couple of things I got to do. First, I have to do some uh, work with the power steering. I got to button a few things up. Uh, going to take just a little bit. And then we're going to get into it. So, stick around. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do a little bit of a voiceover here because the traffic is act is actually pretty heavy today. Uh, the only thing I'm doing here is I'm putting in my uh, return line back to the tank of my power steering pump. I just have a scrap piece of power steering line from the donor truck itself. Uh, it ends up actually not working. I go and get the correct one later and it that seems to work all right. But uh, right here I'm just nah, doing what I can. It's just what I had laying around. And I'm not putting in the oil cooler just yet because I just want to get this thing started and running. And this is the fastest way to do it. And the entire time I have the wife over here pestering me relentlessly. Uh, my birthday is just around the corner and I end up stabbing myself right there, which she finds infinitely amusing. And I'm just going to put this in unknowing that, you know, it ain't going to work. But up next, right here, I'm getting my headers all sorted out. And the right side on these eBay headers, these are just S10 swap headers. So if you're looking to put shorties on for a little bit of clearance, these seem to be pretty good. But for a 4L80E, you actually have to uh, use a flap disc, not a regular disc and grind off part of the bell housing. It's just the part that uh, holds your dust cover on. I'll, in, I'll eventually put it on there. But it's just the part that holds your dust cover. You just take a bolt hole out and they fit flawlessly. Uh, not, a really, not really a big deal, but it is something that needs to be done because you can't tighten your headers up until you do it. And these headers seem to be pretty nice. I think I paid... $90 for them with a collector and a spot for your O2 port. So other than this little bit of grinding, they are bolt and go. So I'm going to go ahead and do this and we're going to move on to the next thing because this is kind of boring because she didn't want to lay on the ground because it's cold and it's muddy down there and it seems terrible, which she wasn't wrong. But yeah, we'll move on to the next thing. Alrighty, well, welcome back. Uh, hopefully today's the day we're starting this damn thing. So, <clears throat> I'm making a bracket for my ECM, and I have to make a little tab to engage my brake switch. So, I already have these measured out on a piece of uh, iron that I use to flush deer hides, whatever. Uh, so, I didn't do any measurements. Not a one. All I did is I set this on the edge of my table. And I figured out how much further down I wanted this to bend for my tab. And then I measured the height of this here ECM. And by measured, I mean I held it up and marked it. I come across here and I left a little bit of space for either end so I can put rubber in it. Made another little mark. Did the exact same process on the other side. And then I... <laughs> For the brake switch thing, all I did is I got a zip tie and I held it up there and I went, yep, it's got to go about that far and then I cut the zip tie off right there. So this is my measuring stick. Kind of the same thing. I laid my zip tie down. I made a little dot where I need a hole. I made a little mark where I need a bend. And then I just come over however far I felt was right and made a mark and that's where I'll cut it off. So with this one back here, I'm just going to drill that hole and... Probably gonna make it a little oversized so I can slide it and move it a little bit. Sim super simple. All it is is uh, disengage for the switch itself. So that should be easy enough. Uh, put a bolt through it, tighten it down way too tight with some Loctite and an impact. Call that good. Uh, I do have the radiator in all the way, 90% uh, of the way in. I got some self-tappers to put the fan shroud on. We'll go ahead and do that. I need to put the surge tank back on it. 
which I'll need to get one of my heater core hoses and cut it. I have a Y from my tank heater that I can put into there and that'll make it do the filling up thing. Uh, oh, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and put oil in it. I got the gauges sorted out a little bit better. I have the hot and ground hooked up to them and I have the, uh, actually I have nuts on the back side of them so they'll stay in there. I forgot to get a fuel gauge while I was out today so I'm gonna have to go and do that. And probably not gonna hook my tack up just yet. I don't think. I'll know if it's running way too fast. So we'll go ahead and get the brain box put in there. We'll get uh, well, no, <laughs> I'll get this cut and bent and then get the brain box put in there. Uh, then I'll put my brake switch all together. I have to hook up my alternator power just over the battery and then I'm going to run my battery wire over to that bus bar and I'm going to do the same thing for the uh, ground bus bar, run that back. I have my transmission linkage hooked up. I'll show you that whenever I uh, uh, change my transmission fluid. I did it last night in the dark. That's why I didn't show you. So, man, we're there. I have the transmission cooler hooked up. I'm probably gonna need to uh, do AN fittings for that because it's it's not in there. I'll show you, it's not in there good. But we're I mean, we're right there, just starting it. My pedal mount still isn't here, it's gonna be here Monday. But I can start it, I can put it in gear, and I can coaster around the driveway, see if I have brakes, which I should, and uh, just see if it moves. So, hopefully we can get all that done today. The uh, wife's parents wanna to go to Texas for a house, we'll see. If not, we got tomorrow. Tomorrow's gonna to be cold and snowy. Today is chilly and rainy. As you can see, I got my my stuff on. I need to get a little rain jacket. But anyway, let's get into it. I'm gonna go ahead and get this stuff cut and bent, and I'll see you when we're putting this in. Okay, so real quick, got the pan off. That's not the best, but I've driven worse, I think. Oh wow, look, the transmission pan was completely clean. And we're just gonna pretend that none of that metal was in there, it's fine. All right, so I'm putting in my O2 sensors. I'm gonna anesthesize them. These are the old ones. This one I may have cooked. So it's gonna go in on the passenger side because I think that's the easier one to get to, maybe. Uh, I'm also running a small experiment. Uh, this is spray-on copper anesthesize. And then this is some nickel that I've used for years on everything. I haven't really used O2 sensors, but I've used it on a lot of other stuff to pretty good success. I use this stuff at work on all my exhaust stuff because that's what they give us. And I'm going to see if there's a difference. Biggest thing with these is you want to make sure that crush ring, just like a spark plug, uh, makes a good seal all the way around. Uh, if it doesn't, it'll let exhaust out and a little bit of oxygen in, and it'll make it think that you're running way too lean, and it'll try to richen it up, and it just throws everything all fucked up. So I'm going to go ahead and get these bolted in, just like that, and I'll get my wires hooked up uh, over the transmission and then spread to these to keep these away from the heat as much as possible. I know these can hold up to a little bit of heat, but I figure they're going to have a lot of heat to them. Alright, well I skipped ahead a little bit. Uh, I got pretty much everything buttoned up. Uh, I got my powers and grounds run. Transmission fluid is good. Uh, I have my headers on. I have my O2 sensors in. Uh, I have my wires run up the back side of the engine from the transmission side. Uh, I, got, I got a few other things done but more importantly is I have a buddy of mine here and we're getting ready to try and start this thing and he's here to tell me if I'm on fire or if I have fluids pouring from places uh, but I don't even have a steering wheel in this thing I just needed to fire because I again I just want to burn this thing to the ground 
It'd be so much easier. I'd put it next to the house, get a new house, get a new truck. It'd be fantastic. Anyway, let's try and start it. Let's, let's see. I need some gas. All right, so we just hooked up the positive wire and nothing caught on fire so far. Oh yeah, we need to hook the main positive back up to the starter. But we'll, we'll get that in a second. Uh, we're gonna get that hooked up and then we're gonna crank this son of a bitch over and see what happens. Uh, we'll have to bleed the fuel system from the Schrader valve over there. I'll make sure that I have the correct pressure as long as this cheap ass eBay pressure gauge works right. And we're gonna hope we wake up people three counties over. So let's get that hooked up and see what happens. had to uh, put a starter in it and actually put coolant in it because I forgot to do that and now the weather is getting worse we'll go ahead and try it again let's see what happens You turn your jump pack back on? No. Okay, first time trying to start this. Let's see what it does. We got, we got fuel pressure. Okay, so here's the rundown. It started, mostly. Got a couple of cylinders that aren't uh, firing, which I'm pretty sure, I've talked to a few people that know a lot, a lot more about this than I do, and it's a couple of injectors, a couple of few injectors, because I mentioned in a previous video that I had gotten a whole bunch of rust in the right bank injectors because of the crossover tube because I had to replace my fuel rail and all that. I sprayed them out WD-40. Well, here we are. Uh, so I have some injectors on the way and I have a fuel pressure regulator here because I was getting way, way too much fuel. I was getting like 75 pounds up to the rail and you're only supposed to have 58. You can go 60, 61, something like that and you'll be all right. And then under full throttle it'll drop just a little bit. But 74 was way too much so that was part of our problem and just waiting on a couple of parts all right so i'm taking a break from that damn truck i need to get a fuel pressure regulator so it looks like i'm not going to get it done before my birthday like i wanted to but it's fine it's fine it started so we're going to go and move to things that are actually important we're going to have uh, this guy here clean up the seats this is kevin the guy that i mentioned in a previous video he does some detailing on the side, uh, and he's done it for a little while, and he's gonna fuck it up real good for me. So, do my best to fuck it up good. Yeah. All right, so I know it's a little bit dark. Um, as you can see here, there's some stuff in it. It's probably just pieces of hay. I wasn't able to vacuum out 
and he's going to get this out and maybe take care of some stains. So I'll go ahead and let him explain what he's doing. So starting with, everybody knows these are wheel cleaning brushes. They're pretty hard bristle. One of the easiest things that you could do, take a drill, put it in. You run these things in reverse, spitting it down the material, and it's gonna help dig all this stuff out before you end up trying to wash anything, use any kind of cleaners, because any mud or dirt, it's just gonna get embedded deeper with liquid. That's first step. Uh, me running vacuum over this, did that affect that at all? It got the worst of it out. Okay. You're not really gonna push anything into it with a vacuum. It's just, you don't okay. want, you want to get as much dirt off of it as possible yeah. before you start putting liquid on it. Like I said, it'll get embedded deeper and especially going into the foam. We're doing this inside because it's pretty cold out now. And like I told him, it's hard to get these, even with a good vacuum, to get them 100% dry. So you don't want it to just sit and get stagnant in cold weather, end up building mold. So that's why everything's inside right now. Okay, so right here, it's pretty simple what he's doing. Like he explained, he's running that in reverse to kick a lot of that dirt out. Uh, up here on the headrest, it's a little bit harder to see, but right there, you see all that dirt getting flung out of there. And I used that shock back just as slow and easy as I could. And he's basically putting half of my barn into my house. The wife is super appreciative of it. Uh, but I am more appreciative of how clean this thing's coming out. Like, look at all that dirt down there. You can just see, that's just a little bit that I scooped up. That's not including what all we're breathing in. And look how much better that looks. It's fantastic. This is for where we're using... Oh, okay, this is when we're running the, the cleaner on it. Yeah, okay. this is a good stain extractor. Don't have to use chemical, guys. I just find this works better. Now, when I use this, normally I dilute it, but with these having sat in a barn, plus it's not hurting anything anyway. No. It's not acidic, it doesn't tear up the fabric. Yeah. It's, it works really well on any mud, uh, Food stains, it'll help break down like sugar and stuff. So anything like yeah. stuck into the carpet, it helps break it down. Okay. Most of your day-to-day -day stuff. Yeah, that's all you really need. coat and that way this stuff has a minute to actually sit in to what you're working on give it time to break everything down yeah, yeah how long do you normally let it sit for i normally let it sit for about five minutes come oh, okay. back in hit it with a little bit of water to help loosen everything up yeah and then go through hit it with the drill then vacuum it out yeah so you can use a carpet extractor but those things don't get enough of the moisture out a good yeah. shot back pulls a lot more moisture out yeah that and the shop vac's all I have. <laughs> you asked if it was a wet or dry vac, wet and dry vac. Cause I, well, I mean, either way, it was going to be. <laughs> yeah, some people get real picky and they won't suck up a liquid without having the foam sock. God forbid. That one, you're just supposed to take the filter clean out of it. Really? Yeah, you don't run filter at all. You can suck up three gallon of water. Well, I don't think we'll have that much in here. All right, so we're going to let this sit for about five minutes, come back to it, hit it with water, and try to clean it out. Hell. All right, we've let it set long enough. Now do your thing, Bob. He did just spray water on this, just so we're Yeah, it, it we're aerates clear. a little bit, so you put some water on. Just use a standard carpet brush on a drill. You don't have to go too fast. You'll see it'll start to turn a bit of a muddy brown. You'll get suds everywhere in great time. That's, that's true. You don't have to put pressure on it just the weight of the drill. Too much pressure, you end up embedding all of this back into it. You really don't want that. Yeah. 
All right, so we have the back done and we're just gonna get a close look at this front before and after. Well, we, he has the seat clean. Uh, it's not much different, but it's good enough. Uh, he wanted to go and clean a lot more of this, but that's just not, I'm, I'm not, I'm not doing that. It's not worth it, these aren't staying in there. So the shampooing and everything was a little overboard, but I appreciate it. So I'm gonna call it for the night. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and get the other one cleaned up and hopefully I'll, we'll be putting these in tomorrow or the next day or whenever they're dry because they're still a little bit damp and i don't know i'll just figure it out but i thank the hell out thank the fuck out of it whatever i i appreciate the hell out of it <laughs> god i can't talk sorry I'm not even late but uh no oh, you've had a long day but let's get back after it and Get this thing off the coffee cup. <laughs> Alrighty, so let's go ahead and get the seats in this thing, and through the power of editing and willpower, uh, it's cleaned up right about now. Oh wait, that's not how real life works. Damn it. Alrighty, so here's how this is kinda gonna go. These brackets were already here from inside another truck. Pretty sure I'm just gonna have to poke a hole in it right there. And then this, I'll show it better from the other side, but sits down in there and it's cut off. So I'm going to get the other seat in here and line it up a bit better because I think I have it straight. But you know how that goes, see how that's... See how that's cut off and it's kind of sort of sitting up there, which I think is kind of cool. But yeah, I'll go ahead and get the other one set in there like I said. I think that's straight, but we'll find out for sure here in a second. Okay, so here's the next step. That seat is in with one bolt and a self-tapper, I think, just holding it. This one is only in by one self-tapper up here. Uh, the holes aren't quite right. I tried. Let's see. To get it slid over. But that hump is in the way, and this is meant to sit down in there anyway. So, all I did is I flattened that one down just a little bit, and I marked it with, and I marked it with a uh, sharpie. I have that one marked with a sharpie. I thought, anyway, I'll remark it, um, and then I'm gonna get that one back there with a Sharpie also. I might have to do some bending on it, but I'd like to get uh, that one bolted in and this one, oh, and this one bolted in and maybe even the one back here bolted in first so I can, so I can slide this forward and get into it a little bit easier maybe, I don't know. And then that one over there is pretty straightforward. I'm gonna have to shim this up you can see there's a bit of a gap. This is not a perfect fit, but it's pretty close. Uh, I am going to have to shim this up, and if you guessed I was going to do it with washers, you're right.
So stick around for that. Okay, so the seats are in. They're actually bolted. Might add a self-tapper here just to keep that down. Uh, got a bolt, five thick washers over there. The same thing in the back. No bolt back there, but you don't need that one. It's a suggestion. I got this one in right here. I got the two on the inside there, and I'm actually using that stud on this back one. Uh, way more comfortable than the factory ones, I promise you. Now, I think I'm gonna do a little bit of wire cleanup because it's a mess in there. And I'm just gonna relax and enjoy the seats a little bit. So, I don't know. Oh yeah, I have a special mod since I didn't have the thing. But yeah, I'm gonna get to clean up wiring, nothing crazy. Alrighty, uh, I got the wiring cleaned up. Kinda, I just zip tied everything up, call it a day. Uh, this is my Tejas pedal mount. So, full disclosure, they say right on their website, make sure you have the right pedal before you buy the mount. So I saw the pattern here and I didn't really see this, but I kind of remembered it. And this is for a Camaro pedal. The one that I would almost need is a Corvette pedal because it's, oh, it's offset how it should be. But they don't actually make a mount for this pedal here. And I probably should have read a little more and thought a little bit more because I thought it was odd that they weren't mentioning truck pedals but they call this a plastic truck pedal and they think they are garbage, which, I mean, you know, it's possible, but I'm, I'm not gonna buy another pedal to go on this. So if I wanted to, I could buy a Camaro pedal put right on here and it'd be exactly how I need it to be and it'd be everything I ever dreamed of. But I'm cheap, <clears throat> that's another $90. So I figured out where I need this to be. One bolt up there and I have this outlined exactly where that needs to sit. And I have a piece of metal, a grinder, a welder, and the will to ruin perfectly good parts. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. Uh, all I'm gonna do is I got me one of my bolts here in my back pocket. I'm gonna put this bolt right up top, probably from this side. We're gonna line this up right here. We're gonna snake this through the other side until it lines up for where I need that hole to be. And then we're gonna make a mark over here. And I'm gonna cut that off an angle grinder and weld it to this. After I weld it to this, I'll match that marker line back up and I'll poke a hole in it with my drill and we'll be done. Now. The next part of this is actually mounting it in the truck. Now, like I said, I've already got it figured out where it needs to be and how it needs to be mounted. So, the way that this sits, if I just put it in there exactly like that, it would be sticking pretty much straight, straight at you. So, this has to be shimmed down. So, I have my really thick stainless washers, and I think it's four of them in here will shim this top out, out far enough to where this actually tilts down in a humanly manner. And it fits pretty good. I had the top bolt in there and I had it tight and I put this in here just like that and that's actually how I came up with that mark and it feels really, really nice. It's over sort of on the, or close to the tunnel and whenever you pin it to the floor, you have about that much just before it bottoms out, so that's pretty nice. So, without, thir further, without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and ruin this. So, first step in my mind is put this back the way that I had it a second ago. Set that right, yeah. And the reason why I'm feeding this from the other side is so I don't waste any material unnecessarily. Some vice grips would have been smart actually, the more I think about it. Let's see that vice grip real quick. Not sure or not. Nope, I just
just got a sharpie and you know lack of self control. This in here. This will also come down to to my ability to actually cut this correctly, which I don't know. What I'll probably do, since I want that to be halfway all right, is I'm going to go ahead and cut it a little bit fat over here with my angle grinder, and then I got my belt grinder, and I'm going to go in there and clean it up a little bit more, maybe put a light bevel on it. Because I'm going to go in here and weld her on both sides because God knows it's going to need it with me welding with a, a flux core welder. Not saying they can't do the job, saying I can't do the job with them. So let me go ahead and get that cut. My basic strategy for here is just keep running this around until I get to where it starts to curve and then I can run it along this wheel here and give me a little bit more of a, uh, what am I wanting to say here, concave, I think, yeah, uh, draw to it. I have a little bit of water because this thing's going to get damn hot, dip it in there and it keeps from burning your phalanges. So I'll line that up almost to that bend down there, and that should get me pretty close. I'll put a welder's magnet across the top here and tack it on the, probably on the ends, and then tack it on the back and the sides. And then I'll probably bring it up here to finish it a little bit because I'll have a raised bead right here. Speaking of which. So. A little bit of bevel there, a little bit of bevel there. It almost looks like I'm a welder. I assure you I am not by any means. So I'm going to weld these up real quick. I'd bring you to the basement, but it's a little crowded, so I'm going to go do that. Okay, now that I got this all welded up and halfway cooled down, uh, I'm not a welder, but you know, I'm going to start running classes because you people could learn a thing or two from me. I mean... Nobody can bubble gum and splatter quite like that, I promise. But now, I'm just going to grind this here completely flat. Hopefully, I don't lose all of my Sharpie line. And I'm just going to put the other, or put the pedal back on here and mark my hole and drill it out. And we're done. Then I'm probably going to find the closest spray paint, which might be that engine paint over there. And we're going to go ahead and paint paint this up so yeah nothing crazy all righty well we got this thing uh all mounted up i drilled the hole wrong and then had to waller it out as per usual uh it fits on there nice fits on there snug it's straight i mean i can't can't complain about that i'll go ahead and throw a coat of paint on it and let it sit but that is going to do it for today's episode next time i'm not 100 percent sure what i'm going to be doing next to be completely honest with you. So uh, stick around and you'll be just as surprised as I am. Uh, please don't forget to like and subscribe. That really means a lot to me. And I hope you have a wonderful day. And I'll see you next time.